So if you thought the news this week was going to be quiet during the off week between the Las Vegas and the Charlotte Four Wide Nationals, boy oh boy, were we all wrong. We have been slammed with a bombshell rumor that was dropped this morning by Competition Plus about the future possibility of one of NHRA's top teams as well as the sport's icon driver. We have a lot to talk about and a lot to speculate as well about the future of that team and the future of their driver lineup. Let's get into the video. But before we do, like always, if you like the videos that we make, if you like the content that we build, and you like the interviews that we have, be sure to subscribe today to Mighty Mac on YouTube as we head into the month of May. We're going to have a month-long coverage live from Indianapolis Motor Speedway of the Indy GP, of Qualifying Weekend, and of course, of the Greatest by Clone Racing, the 108th running of the Indianapolis 500. But of course, you cannot forget as well, we're going to have coverage of the Chicago Route 66 Nationals from Joliet, Illinois. So if you like what we're doing, be sure to subscribe today so you don't miss out on anything coming up within the next month. And without further ado, let's get into the video. So as mentioned at the top of the video, it was reported earlier today by Competition Plus that former top fuel driver Jordan Vandergrift and current NHRA on Fox analyst Jordan Vandergrift was spotted on Monday piloting the peak Chevrolet funny car owned and driven by NHRA icon John Force. The article is brief and will be linked down below, which I highly recommend you look at to give it the credit it deserves. So please go read it and check out the other content that they give as well, because right now they are the top independent news source when it comes to NHRA content. The, again, the brief, the statement was brief and short, but there was a lot within there, especially that last bit that they have, which I'll read right now. It's a pretty good notion that when someone drives John Force's funny car, other than the 17 time funny car champion, folks are going to talk. Well, maybe not Vandergrift, who is not answering his phone. And this is a true statement of not only just the fact that people are talking, but because of the fact that Jordan's not answering his phone, which I'll get into later. But I want to go on that first point of people talking, and it's because of the fact that I got to talk to some people who were at that press, who were at that test, who saw what happened and what they had to say as well. And some people who are close to the matter it's pointed out. Uh, that Jordan would only be testing in a force car if that was something that would be a future consideration of John's replacement. They also went on to say, Jordan isn't racing anytime soon. They had to shut him off for both runs because he was all over the place. I'm sure he'll get the hang of it soon. And of course, that is a statement of the fact that going from a long a long dragster, rear engine dragster, to a front engine, shorter wheelbase funny car is a big step and a big learning curve. And for Jordan Vandergrift, he's going to have a lot to learn when it comes to driving a funny car. So don't take those two botched runs as saying that he's not going to be in that car. This is still a steep learning curve for him to get to. And like it was said from my source, I do believe as well, he will get a hang of driving a fuel funny car. But it also was pointed out back in December by Susan Wade of Autosport, who got to listen in on an interview with John Force by Joe Costello, that he pointed out the future of John Force racing as well, where he went on to say, I've got a lot of work to do because I'm not getting any younger. But what's cool is we built a situation, Force told moderator Joe Costello. If any reason I went down and I could any day, Austin Proc would step right into my seat. Wouldn't be a problem. He's driven funny cars. He's even driven dragsters. Now, to that second point as well, it was also stated that Vandergrift has not been answering his phone to Competition Plus, has also as well not been saying a word, and that is pretty consistent with what John Force Racing has been doing since this test has happened. Going as far as when I've gone to my contacts at John Force Racing, I have been left on red. They don't even tease me with any teasers about what this story is. But also the fact that on a Monday during that test, when crew members were asked about what was going on with Jordan, they responded by saying, we can't say anything about this. Now, of course, this is a not new thing for John Force Racing. They're very protective about what their employees say, about what they do. They don't even let them on camera without a written statement from John Force Racing allowing them to do so. And they have a good reason for doing that, and that's because they are very protective of the sponsors and the partners that are on that car, and they don't want to give them reason to jump. And obviously, with John retiring, that is probably the biggest jump that they'll have because, again, much like if you remember listening to the Dale Jr. download, and matter of fact, if you remember, a big thing they always talked about, a lot of the sponsors that joined DEI, even back when Dale Earnhardt was alive, 
were associated with Dale Earnhardt Jr. Budweiser, you look on here as well. Ritz, Napa's on the back quarter panel. A lot of sponsors that were on other cars were all tied to get associated with the Earnhardt name and Dale Jr. because they wanted that marketing boost. Same story applies here. A lot of these sponsors, Cornwell Tools, AAA, Peak, I wouldn't even be surprised about Monster, even though that's a Brady Force sponsor. They're all associated with John Force. They all want to be a part of the name John Force, the same way Budweiser and Napa wanted to be associated with the name Earnhardt. So they're wanting to do as much as they can to not give them a reason to jump and a reason to abandon ship. Because just like we saw last year with, Cor with Montana Brands, they left at the end of the season, leaving Austin without a ride. They had to shut that car down and then... Robert stepped out to give Austin that chance as he went on to go deal with medical issues. But there's also been rumors as well about the future of that. I'm not going to speculate too much on the reason of why because, again, much like Brian Lones has said in the past, much like everybody else has said in the past, it is not my place to go out there and speculate what's going on. But it has been said, and of course, as everybody else is going to speculate as well, that Robert Height will not be stepping back into that fuel funny car. Again, it's been said multiple times that Robert's going to come back. I do have some reason to believe, but again, until I get some sort of confirmation, I can't speculate too much out of respect for Robert Height as well as his family considering anything that's going on. But because of the fact that Robert Height has been dead silent on social media, he has not posted on Instagram since PRI, I believe he's not posted on Twitter since PRI as well or even before that, and on Facebook last time he posted back in February about his daughter Autumn Height racing in Supercomp, which if you want to look further into that, I might be very much overreading this. I remember seeing it back at the U.S. Nationals in Indianapolis when it came across this, but didn't think too much, but starting to self alarm bells in my head. If you remember, John Forrest has a long history of Supercomp drivers. All his daughters raced in it. I believe Austin raced in it as well. Autumn Height doesn't. She races for Torrance Racing in a Capco Super Comp Dragster. So again, I very, very well might be reading too much into this, and I don't want to drag her name into this. But if you want to look at that, you may as well. But if you want to look down in the comments, be sure to leave your thoughts as well about what's going on with this. There is a lot of stories going on. I'm going to try and do what I can to figure out some of the things that I've heard and try and piece together a story of what's going on here. But to think about the future of John Force Racing, where the future might not be Robert High and John Force, a huge vacuum left within the funny currents, replaced by Austin Prock and Jordan Vandergriff, would be a future of a very young John Force Racing. Then, of course, brings up the question as well, what might happen with Peak? What might happen with AAA or Cornwell Tools or anybody else associated with that? This will test their loyalty on whether or not they're going to stay with this team or if they're going to leave and jump ship once John Forrest retires. But, of course, I don't think we're going to have to deal with that for at least for this year or even next year. I would expect this decision to be made by about probably 2026, 2027. I think they just want to get a head start on it so that way they don't have to worry about it. Again, that's going to pretty much wrap up this video. So if you like what we do, be sure to like, be sure to comment, be sure to subscribe, and share this video as well. Again, leave your comments down below on what you think of this. Do you think Jordan Vandergrift is the replacement for John Force? Do you think that his, like, when is he going to retire? Do you think Rubber Hyde's going to come back to the car? Be sure to leave your thoughts down below. Be sure to share the video, do all that fun stuff. And, of course, I will see you guys next week for the Charlotte 4 wide Nationals. I do have some stuff to say about what's going on a Pro Stock Motorcycle, but I'm going to save it until then because I don't think it deserves to be a full spot video just yet. But, again, if you like what we're doing, subscribe today, and be sure to miss out so that you don't miss out on any sort of content within the coming month. And until Charlotte... This has been Mighty Mac, and I will see you next time.